First up from the Bequ- uh, if I pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry, but uh, B Gravy, why wouldn't you trade Zeke? Because you can't because of his contract. Like, trading away Zeke Elliott does not make sense for a team that literally just paid him. And if you were to trade away Ezekiel Elliott right now, you would get a post-June 1st designation that still wouldn't really save you in the end. If you trade him away right now, you would save you would save about $6.8 million in cap on this particular year at the cost of $14.9 million next year. You eat, there's thirty-five point four of, of dead cap money. This cap in this year is $10.9 million. It doesn't make sense for the Cowboys to do that. So you're not going to make a, a you're not going to trade away Zeke because the contract is way too of a of a negative mindset. All right, Nathaniel Davis, do you think a DAC deal will happen before July 15th? We are about a month away, a little bit less than a month now, I guess. Um I I think it's what happens. I uh, I think you'll probably hear some more talk about increasing uh, in terms of the contract talks in maybe a week or two. Somewhere in that time frame, I, I think a deal gets done, yes, but there is no guarantee. Both sides appear pretty staunchly dug in. Dak wants more along the lines of a four-year deal. Cowboys want more along the lines of a five-year deal. So we'll see if either side blinks. Historically, they both kind of blinked. You know, Demarcus Lawrence blinked in the Cowboys talks. Cowboys blinked with Zeke. So we'll see what happens. From L2N Gaming, what do you think is our, I mean, the Cowboys' biggest weakness? I think it's the secondary. I mean, I, I look at what that, that unit looks like. I, I am higher on Cheetah than I know many of you guys are, and that's fine, but I think he's maybe a number two. There is no number one corner. We'll see how Trevon Diggs looks in year one. You might make more turnovers. You're going to give up bigger plays, though, without Byron Jones on that team. Noah Griffin, what would the record be for the Cowboys if Zeke does not play? Well, I think Tony Pollard's pretty damn good. Uh, you'd still need another number two back there. Maybe you lose an extra game or two. Um, I, I feel confident about Pollard back there. This is going to be a pass-happy offense, I believe, anyway. And I do want to emphasize this. I know that Zeke has tested positive for Corona. This is not like a all of a sudden he can't play at all the entire season. Like, we are in June. I think if training camp starts in mid to late July, as I expect it to, I think Zeke's probably going to be out there because now that he has it, he'll, he'll, he'll recover and he'll probably be a little bit safer and take less risks as the season gets closer and closer. Speaking of, of the Cowboys 2020 season, what will be their record? Let me know in the comments. I think 10.5 right around there is a good over under on the wins for the Cowboys this year. Maybe they go 10 and 6. Maybe they go 11 and 5. Are they playing for anything in, in uh, you know come week Week 17, is that a must-win game? Is it a meaningless game? I see 11-5, and 10-6, 12-4. So, for the most part, double-digit wins is the main area. From DM, how do we fix our secondary holes? So, the unfortunate reality of life in the NFL is that by the time you get to June and July, if you have holes on your roster, you're probably not going to be able to fix them in the way you'd be able to in the offseason. Like, you're not going to be able to necessarily go out and trade for somebody. You're, you're not going to be able to go and, and add a, a huge big-time player. Like, that's not – in most cases, there are exceptions, but in most cases, that's not how it normally works out. So, in reality, to truly fix it, unless you can swing a trade for a like, like a Jamal Adams or, or a corner, you're probably going to wait till next offseason. A super chat coming in from Project, is it Bappy, Baby? If I mispronounce the project, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you think about the Chiefs-Cowboys preseason game? Uh, yes, that's the, uh, I believe it's the, the fourth of the five planned, I should say, Cowboys preseason games. I wonder if the NFL does go to a shortened preseason schedule. I wonder if that's the game that does end up getting played because Cowboys, see, those would probably get canceled or delayed or whatever. Cowboys Chargers with LA, that might game might get canceled. Then it's Ravens Cowboys. That's a, a regular season matchup, so they could cancel that one. And then it's a, a closer set of games. Chiefs and Cowboys, Cowboys and Texans. So in theory, that that would be the dress rehearsal game for the Cowboys. So probably the one that's most likely to to, to get played and, and matter in the end. So I'm looking forward to it as much as you can look forward to a preseason game, you know? 
All right, from Scott Yakubowitz. I don't think I said that one right. Uh, Jarwin Blakeout breakout year. I think, yeah, and there's a pretty darn good chance that that ends up being the case. Um, I think that he's going to maybe double his his targets. I think that's going to lead to roughly doubling his receptions, his yards. I think 700 yards, which is a lot, is a doable breakout year for Blake Jarwin. And, and with Witten out, I do think, Scott, that, yeah, the Cowboys are going to have a breakout year. Or he's going to have a breakout year. Excuse me. Uh, Luis Hernandez, do you think the duo of Zeke and Pollard are underrated? I'm not sure where they rank uh, um, like in the NFL among the running back duos, but I'd probably put them top five, that one-two punch, knowing that, that, that the first punch is, of course, the most important there. But, I mean, go through some of the other top back duos in the NFL, like based on the number one guy, McCaffrey doesn't have much, much help in, in Carolina. The Giants don't have Saquon a bunch of great help either. The Browns, I think, have the best one-two punch in the NFL. Maybe the Vikings are in that discussion because Alexander Madison is pretty darn good as well, and they got some fun depth with Mike Boone. But I think the Cowboys should be with, with Zeke and Pollard inside that top five, more or less. Uh, we hope everyone out there is staying safe as best as they possibly can. If you need a mask, get a Cowboys-themed one. And if we're able to go to games this year, we're probably going to have to be wearing masks. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Mask. Go check them out. they got a bunch of different styles and colors. That link's in the comments and the description. It's Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Mask. There is a bit of a wait to fully get the order. Not a huge surprise on that front, but get in line while you still can. And by the time we get to the games, it'll be, for, it'll be at your house with plenty of time. All right, from Winston Chan rocking a brutal photo of me from our MLB draft coverage. If Reggie Robinson impresses in training camp in the preseason, would you cut a Wouzier? No, I'm not doing that. Because even if Robinson impresses, I I'll assume Diggs impresses, isn't a Wouzier still my third best corner? Like, why would I cut a Wouzier before I would, you know, cut Canada or, or cut Daryl Worley? So if Robinson impresses, awesome. That's a huge thing. On that's a big, big deal on that front. But at the same time, maybe I move Tito to safety. I think there's more value to be had in Wuzi either being on the roster or maybe you consider trading him than simply outright cutting him. From Felix Williams, is Zeke OK? Yes, the breaking news here from Monday, again, this Q&A part of our live show, is that Zeke has tested positive for uh, COVID-19, one of several to be determined and unnamed right now Cowboys players who have tested positive. Zeke's agent says he's feeling good right now. Shouldn't be a, a huge um, major like long-term impact on Zeke and on the Cowboys. I fully expect he's going to be fine and healthy long-term. He's a young athlete. If anyone's going to be able to, to, to get by with no long-term impact, it's a, it's a person like Ezekiel Elliott. I do want to make note, by the way, Last Sunday night, June 7th, Zeke was out at Citizen Nightclub here in Uptown Dallas, was not wearing a mask, and we know at least two other people at the club that night who have also tested positive. So are you guys concerned? What is your panic level about Zeke having COVID-19? Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. How concerned are you guys? At some level, it's it's a little bit of like, a, oh, of course it was Zeke who tested positive, given his, his litany of, of other off-the-field stuff. Of course, I think his personal health is the most important part. I think he's going to be fine. I, I, I don't think that a player in the caliber of shape that Elliott is is going to have a bunch of long-term impacts. It's possible, but I think he'll be fine there. So that at least gets it beyond, I think, just a one there. And then I think by the time we get to training camp, Zeke's going to be over this. He'll, he'll have recovered. He'll be totally fine. Already on his way to recovery. So maybe it's like a four or five. I see some negative numbers coming in there. It's, it's certainly worth discussing. I think it's a fair question to ask. I do think Zeke will end up being okay, though, in the end. All right, so some more mailback questions coming in here from Cowboy Mike. Do you think we trade for Jamal Adams after signing Dak? Again, um... Everything around Adams has not actually changed. Like, Adams has, the Jets want to extend him, but they want to wait on a deal. Adams is not happy about that. He wants to get a big extension. The Cowboys have interest, yes. I am not convinced the Jets want to send Adams to Dallas because I think there was 
even though it'll never be proven. Some level of tampering going on there. Um, if the Jets do shop Adams, the Cowboys are going to be interested. I'm just not convinced the Jets actually end up doing it. Super chat from the Popos. Does LVE have an NFL future because of his injuries? I hope so, right? Um, I, I hope that this ends that LVE is fine. The neck is concerning to me. Neck injuries don't normally just suddenly disappear. Hopefully that ends up being the case, but that is always going to be an asterisk or a red flag or whatever on the on LVE as you look for, towards an extension down the road, towards relying on him as a long-term linebacker. I hope the answer is yes, but it's a concern. From L2N Gaming, do you think Logan Ryan would help? I know his coverage stats aren't good, but he gets turnovers. I think that's what we will need. Logan Ryan did make a bunch of turnovers last year, a bunch of interceptions, forced fumbles. Logan Ryan was also targeted more than any cornerback in the NFL. If you give the number of targets Logan Ryan had towards Jordan Lewis, the turnover numbers being, or end up being pretty darn similar. He allegedly wants $10 million. Not remotely interested at that price. And then the biggest reason is that Logan Ryan is a nickel corner, which is not a, a knock, but the Cowboys have two good nickels, Anthony, or at least passable nickels, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis. So if I already have two of them, why do I need a third? So for me, I'm not that interested at Logan Ryan, given where he'd fit on this roster and the cost involved. From Project, again, good season for Jalen Smith. That's the hope, right? is that Jalen is, is able to bounce back and return to form and have a good season. I want 2018 Jalen Smith. I loved that dude. 2019 Jalen Smith was pretty darn frustrating to watch, especially in coverage. I know some of you guys didn't like the celebrations, all of that. I get it. I think Jalen will bounce back. I think playing under Mike Nolan, a linebacker's coach by trade, will be a positive uh, asset for Jalen Smith as well. So I'm optimistic. We'll just see what ends up happening. Destroyer Dog wants to know if the season will be canceled. We'll, we'll let you guys answer this one, too, in just a second. I think that's a bit of an overreaction right now. Uh, you guys can cast your votes, A for yes, B for no, if there will be a season. It's June. Players tested positive. They're going to test positive in July. They'll test positive in, in August. They'll probably test positive during the season. Like, that's just the way that the United States is handling this. That's the way we're trending is that we're going to allow positive tests. We've opened back up, and I don't think we're going to shut back down with an election coming up. I just I don't think that's a likely reality. And for the NFL, folks, they're going to force their way in. The SEC is playing football this year, and the NFL is playing football this year. Is it going to be the same football we're used to? No, because there might not be very many people in, in the crowds, if any. But I do think there's going to be a, a season in 2020. Hey, Tom, do you think the Cowboys will use more of our DBs and have our linebackers in the beginning of the season since we don't really know about LVE's health? Well, by the time we get to week one, we're going to know what LVE's health looks like. Now, nickel is the true base coverage in today's NFL. You don't use three linebackers very much. If you're trying to slowly bring back LVE, which, again, we'll have a feel for that by the time we get to training camp or week one, regardless, maybe you, maybe you do use a little bit more like the nickel and, and whatever. Um, so I think maybe you do use linebackers more. I hope that's the route that, that the Cowboys would, would end up pursuing because I like it when that's the, the path that – they, they end up going. I think that's just a, a better uh, a better path overall. I think coverage easier with secondary guys than it is linebackers. But as for the Van Der Esch side, we're going to have to wait and see on that one. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.